Hello everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm Billy from D4H Technologies. If we're connected on LinkedIn, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you probably saw my really quick and dirty video last week presenting D4H's brand new personalizable community lifeline status board in conjunction with FEMA's new release of their 2.0 guidance for the community lifelines initiative. Now, what we're going to focus on in this video and hopefully it won't be more than 15 or 20 minutes, is really the in-depth presentation of how we can upload information, how we can adjust information and customize it, and really create your entire situational awareness at your fingertips with our software. So there's gonna be a few aspects of this demo. First, presenting right now on the screen, our operations center and our incident management software, which we provide with D4H, or virtual EOC practically. And what you'll notice is that with this incident that I created here, Community Lifelines, we can always preload and enter in information for every single incident so it's ready to go from the starting line. So for example, with this specific incident of Community Lifelines, I just have that incident preload my Community Lifeline status board only. But I can always adjust that with incident settings by adding in more status boards or if I go to our admin area, which is where you customize and update everything, that's where you can also preload your incident templates with plans, information, staffing, data, anything you need. So what we'll do is we're going to jump over to the admin area to first introduce our customizability power and what kind of options we have there. And then we're going to jump into the actual incident management example and how those changes can cross over between one another. So what I'm going to do as you in this profile, I'm going to open up the admin area. And this is our backend customizability that every single customer has access to to edit and upload information that they need for their incidents within our software. Now I have a status board and a collection that I'm going to present to you guys today. Within the collections and our templates. So first we're going to see here a status board. This is a list of all the status boards that I have currently in my demo. And of course, this is limitless. As you see here, you can have infinite amount of templates in our system. Now, with Community Lifelines, what you're going to notice is that when I jump into the incident example, you're going to see all this information present in the form of our status board. So this is where I created it. This is how I put it together. And you're going to see that lifetime of the incident. And we're also going to make some changes to show you again just how easy it is to update and input information at the click of a button. With the collections, this is more so your data entry, right? So with lifelines, components, and subcomponents, instead of manually entering in every single one that might exist within your agency or whatever you use, we created the entire list of FEMA lingo when it comes to community lines, uh, components and subcomponents that you can just upload into your system here. So you'll see when I start to import these items, how that kind of connects to your incident management example. So let's go over to the community lifelines incident. Again, we're back in our operations center here, and we're going to start adding in some lifelines. Now, for the purpose of this demo, there's going to be two different avenues. There's going to be creating one from scratch, just blank, and there's going to be importing the one from the collections that I just showed you. So creating one from blank, we're just going to add, add a blank example, and you see my collections already coming into play here. But just for fun, I'm going to press add blank. New community lifeline, test for this demo, because maybe I don't want to use the FEMA lingo or the items that I provided within the status board. Lifeline, I'm going to categorize it under other, but maybe if it doesn't fit anything that I have here, I have something called demo test option. Now, this is one that I added really last minute right down below. If I go back to status boards and you see within the status board community lifelines and within the checklist here, demo for test option. I'm just going to delete it to show you how quick it is to make changes. Press save, save this template. Nothing was refreshed on the other page and immediately it just disappeared. Maybe I want to add it back because maybe other isn't appropriate for this lifeline. Demo for test. Add it back. And we're back in. Once I click save to make sure that that change actually goes through. And voila, it just appeared right there. So that's one instance of how quickly changes can happen across the platform, which is great for lifetime updates and moving really swiftly and efficiently throughout an incident. I'm not going to worry about any of the other boxes right now because we're going to jump into a little more detail 
once I actually start to focus on the lifelines. But to finish up some additional changes, because in this demo, I'm also gonna show you some mobile capability of how easy it is to connect the field to the EOC, which is a great when you're talking about community lifelines, because maybe you want the on the ground updates and that mobile capability rather than being locked at your desk in an EOC. So maybe I wanna add some photos. So we're gonna go down add to the form, gonna add a section right below, add a field saying photos. I'm gonna make it a file type and we have all these data options here that you can specify for your query when creating new options in your software. I'm gonna allow the attachment of multiple files and press save. And this will come and play a little bit later, but now you just saw that photos right there simultaneously populate within our software. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave this up here and I'm also gonna now start to import the collections of the pre-made lifelines that I already put into this software. I'm gonna import, I'm gonna choose maybe for today, let's do community safety, let's do mass transit, law enforcement, and power grid, and press import. And immediately you just saw this populate instantaneously on my screen. But then also if I go to the admin area, if you remember from the collections here, very similar, the exact same thing on two different areas. So that's how it presents itself. And I'm always gonna present it as unknown as the fault that can always be changed depending on your agency, your community, your environment. But that's just how I, I put it into the system. It doesn't require any coding, any real difficult options. It's just there and it's really simple to input into our software as we just saw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start specifying some of these lifelines and their components and their subcomponents. And what you'll realize with all these entries here, you have the lifeline, the component, the status, and we put all the subcomponents in the description section just so you have an additional layer of guidance if you want for this software. So I click on Power Grid here. We're gonna see that it's already categorized under energy. When I set the status, this is where you're gonna get that color that you're looking for in FEMA lifelines, where you're going to have the red, amber, green, gray, blue. Because in the community lifelines, you have that logo and then the ring of color. The way we did it in D4H was we have the lifeline, subcomponent or component, and we have the color that's going to carry on with our conditional formatting. Now, of course, you can always upload the logo into the form to really create that consistency between a FEMA form and your agency. But for the purpose of this demo, I was going to show you how we interpreted it at D4H and how we are presenting it here at D4H. So if I go into unknown, we already know that's gray. That's FEMA's color. Significant, we're going to see it change to red. Moderate, see it change to amber. Minimal, see it change to green. And then blue on top of the gray for administrative. Now, if I press moderate again, we have an orange. Go back to community lifelines and there we go. We have the color right there. So you can have a full understanding of the energy lifeline and how we're dealing with those well, let me change it back to moderate. Thank you so much. And there we have that color look and how that presents itself in the software. So let's jump back into here and start to update some information. So again, let's say maybe it's a generation system. I'm just gonna take that, log it to my clipboard, and I'm gonna say generators are failing around Columbus Circle because right now my incident is in New York City, as you can see here by Central Park on the map on the right. Impacted area, let's go over to Columbus Circle and place some geometry. And you see that it's orange or the amber. It matches the color of the community lifeline. So again, you have two different presentations of this color rather than just a ring around a logo. You have the geographic situational awareness and the tabular presentation in our status board. If I change it to red, significant impact, so will the map change, and so on and so forth. Now what we can also do is add in the information of the subcomponent, like most FEMA Community Lifeline forms have. Subcomponent, I'm gonna paste in that item that I saved from the description section. Again, totally adjustable, completely customizable. Whatever you need for your agency, you can just place into this form and edit it and make it work. And again, that's why we're uncomplicated software for emergency management, like you're seeing live right now. Going to the status, generators are failing, street lights are going out, 
liaise with utility ESF. Um, really busy area may need additional crowd control, reestablishment, generators back online, and then back to green. We're going to say we're hoping that it's done by, let's do, I'm just going to redo that there. Let's do 1800. 1800 hours within 24. There we go. And boom. So again, within a few seconds here, and let me just hide my docket as well. Boop. So we just entered in all the information in a few seconds right in front of us on this form that is really slick, really quick, establish complete situation awareness in a few seconds for a community lifeline that is happening within your jurisdiction, within your agency. Go back to the status board here. We can now see a really, really basic summary right above here. So you have that really great 10,000 foot view right in front of you on the status board. And of course, what you show on the status board can be adjusted. If I go back to the admin area, and I go back to community lifelines, I can change this presentation down here, status and description, status and description, and then I can always add other fields that I have within that form. So just again, establishing that how easy it is to import information, upload information, edit everything, customize everything from community lifelines, and you have to work quickly and establish your entire incident with at your fingertips. So let's further explore this by adding in some more information, some more geometry, and then also showing that field to EOC connection and also how we share this information with other people, because that's going to be one of the bigger parts as well. Law enforcement, I'm not going to go into that much detail, but let me just double click into this incident here. I'm going to say that it's minimal impact. We're going to say that it's going to be site security. Um, needs to be on scene to help with crowd control. And we're going to impact the area is going to be a little bit west of Columbus Circle. Maybe we're going to put it in between the Columbus apartments right there. And let me just show you on the map how that looks. Not going to add the row, not going to worry about photos. That's going to happen with the phone. Going to populate some more. Maybe instead of going into the form this time, I'm just going to edit it here. Community safety, great. We're going to say that it's moderate impact. And we're going to say crowd control is needed uh, east of Columbus Circle due to ongoing protests. Great. So now I'm going to save that. Now there's no geometry yet because, again, we're just here on the status board. But you saw how quick it is to update it from this avenue rather than jumping into the form itself. But just to give it some more color. Maybe let's say we upgraded to significant impact and we're going to do the impacted area a different geometry. We're going to say that this is where the demonstration activity is happening east of Columbus Circle. And now we see it. Let me press save one more time to make sure that it actually goes through because it looks like my Wi-Fi is acting a little bit slow today. Try that one more time for good measure. Oh, you know what? That's what I'm not doing. I forget to press save. Press finish. Now we have the geometry. And now we press save. Again, raw, uncut. This is the casual demo. You're seeing me work on this lifetime. And maybe some mistakes you might make also when you're using the software. Even the solution specialist isn't perfect when it comes to this presentation. Now, maybe that red is a bit hard to see. We can always change the layer of the map to say gray. And now we see everything in a really clear photo. So lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the transportation update, and I'm going to show you it from my phone because, again, I want to connect that field to EOC capability. So what we're going to do, I'm going to jump into the transportation aspect here, and my, my hands are off my computer. I just have it in my phone right now. I'm going, to up, I'm going to open up the incident management application. So it's going to biometric scan my face, get me access to this application. A little bit difficult to see but you see the incident that we're currently working with and I'm currently inside of, press the incident, go to our dashboard of Community Lifelines, click Mass Transit, and now what you're gonna see is everything updating live time from my phone. So let's say I'm maybe in the field and I wanna communicate this Community Lifeline to the EOC from my pocket. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna update the status to administrative. 
I'm going to see that that just changed to blue. I'm going to change the description to, let me just work with my fingers here on my phone. I'm going to delete all this and say buses, buses are standing by for law enforcement transport. Press save. Buses are standing by for law enforcement transport. Going to click the impacted area. We're going to go a little bit downtown in Manhattan and say that the buses are staging all the way down here. Press save. Just uploaded here. I'm going to click the computer to give you more situational awareness. Boom, right down below there. And then lastly, photos. Just again, the full proof that this is all happening from my phone live time. Going to take a photo or video. Going to take a photo of my desk setup. Use photo. And you're going to see it upload in a few seconds right now. So you see how simple it is to create situation awareness from your pocket or the computer or the geography in our software with what D4H provides. So not only did we create a status board and we created all these options for you to establish this full capability of resilience and preparedness with community lifelines, it's right here at our fingertips in the software. So that leaves me at the 16 minute and 30 second mark. So hopefully we'll hit it here below 17 minutes. But if you like what you saw, if you have any questions, any ideas for collaboration, maybe you want to understand a bit more about what we create and how we can kind of provide a solution to you, drop me a comment below on this video. And thank you so much for watching.